Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about quality co code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do the big fan companies ensure that their software engineers are only shipping high quality and performant code? Well, I'll start you off by I'll start off by saying that I don't think that they can guarantee that for all situations, but I think that they are better at this than the average company. I've I've well, rather I actually know that they are because I actually know people who work with these companies and I know what usually is the big difference between the two or between the the high-end tech companies uh, in, at least in this regard and with the average company. So the thing that they, like I'm not talking for all the fan companies now, but the thing that they really understand is the, and I mean, we don't like to talk about that. And I think that that is a big mistake. I think that it's a, it's one of those political problems where you're, you're actually creating a worse situation just because you can't look for, at the world for what it is. And the thing that I believe that the fan companies do that I really admire, and I think that, well, it's not just the fan companies. I mean, uh, I was with just the other day, I was watching a very nice tech talk from Instagram. Well, technically that is, it depends on how you define it, if that's a fan company or not. But uh, they had a very nice segment where they were going through where the, uh, the process that they had gone through in order to scale up their their company and one of the key things that they had done which was it, it was the thing that they wanted to optimize for was to use as few servers as possible in other words squeeze as much as possible out of the hardware and they were doing that on python before all the go people come and tell me that oh of course that's uh, very logical because it was not a go this is not a go story it is just a language where well, Python is not really the most performing thing out there, so then they actually go through that in the video as well, where they talk about C bindings and things like that. But the mentality I could completely understand, right? You want to have performance. You want to have performance for one specific purpose to squeeze as much as possible out of the hardware. Makes sense. Very good idea if you're going to scale something. However, what's more interesting was the way that they went through it, and that was through a CI pipeline where they actually had v a, an enormous amount. I think that this actually, it, this definitely rivals the bigger tech companies as well. I mean, they had, uh, they are probably the first company that I've read about, and by I, of course, there's probably companies out there that are doing this, where they had, as part of their CI pipeline, they actually had a function level performance test where if you pushed some code, it had to meet their specified SLOs in terms of execution speed. And if it, if it didn't, it actually did a benchmark, your the CI pipeline, and checked if your code was unperformant. It would stop you and it would basically, well, it would basically val evaluate which function is the culprit, like what function have you written that is unperformant. And I think that that is, is that, I mean, it's gonna get really annoying and if you really are a, t a company of that magnitude, such as say Instagram, where performance is absolutely key and you have a value system within the company where this is the thing that you're, you're willing to put your money where your mouth is. Every single company, literally every single company, say that they care about this stuff and almost nobody does. They have nothing, because if, uh, if you're gonna have the quality, this, that level of quality in your software development process, it's going to take time. It's going to hurt. And the, the fan companies such as, uh, in, uh, well, these companies, they invest in this exact thing. And I think that that is the way that they actually do ensure that they have only qu uh, have most quality pro uh, software being produced. They produce a workflow that ensures it. And that is something that the vast majority of IT companies, they don't do, not to that extent. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do this specific thing, but the thing that really does make sense, and I think that they this is one of the reasons we have, say, Kubernetes, for example. I mean, nobody was doing Kubernetes or similar sorts of things before Google did it. And the reason they did it was to reduce the human error factor to squeeze more out of their infrastructure to reduce the chances of issues and the overhead cost of maintaining all of these uh, 
these virtual machines that we used to use. And the mass, uh, I think that that is the way to go. I'm not saying Kubernetes per se, but I'm saying that if your company wants to have the same level of quality development process as the fan companies, you can absolutely get there. And not just by using Kubernetes or using a specific tool, but by having very experienced senior software engineers develop work frameworks for the people who are working in your company because the convenient political lie that a lot of people like to say like to believe in is that well we all treat our developer like a developer is just a developer it's just a unit of a person right no you have different skill levels of developers you have some developers who are really really good and some that are absolute crap but they're still good enough to just do the job and the worst thing i see and i see this all the time is that management like management never really consider that when they are making uh, decisions like they will take a product and because of scheduling issues they will just give it to any random fucking team and the outcome of that decision is that that team it's not a good place it's not a good owner for the project or it's not a good uh, team a team that should own the specific project and you've seen this many times before in the open source community where it's not just about the, the tool itself, it's also about the people who own the project, who take care of it. And I really do believe that in ter if there's one thing that I truly admire with the fan companies, it is this exact thing. The understanding that in order to create a scalable software, uh, software development process, you need to go heavily in when it comes to investing into uh, reducing human error and actually removing the, because most of this is expensive this is the problem it is fucking expensive to do this but the alternative is that you just let all of the engineers kind of do whatever they want and the problem is engineers are humans even if they're the best engineer ever some days they're not going to be there when a worse engineer does something some days they're going to be tired some days they're not going to feel like it there are all these human factors that play in and in, if you get the wrong developer on the wrong project on the wrong day, the cost to your company is going to be measured over many years to come. And if you want a solution to this, you have to go about it the same way as the fan companies do. They don't just treat that because this is what most companies do. They treat internal tooling and so forth as a necessary evil. It's just something that they do in order to, and in many cases, these system, internal systems are absolute shit. Google and Facebook and so forth, they or the other fan companies, they understand that it, the, the, there is no such thing. Like you can't treat an internal tool or an internal process as this wishy-washy kind of waste uh, waste that you do, because if that thing is in any way connected into the quality of the work that you're going to ship towards your customer it's going to affect the process and you really don't want to get into a position which is the thing that usually happens when you have this mindset where developers and people who work in the software teams they get demotivated it's the called the brink broken window process uh, pr principle if there's one broken window there's going to be a second one and before you know it the value of the building has gone down because it looks like absolute shit and i've seen this happen over and over and over and over and I don't think that it's possible to not have this problem when the company grows. And that is why I truly believe that the difference between the fan companies, the big difference between them and most other companies is that they understand that if they want quality software to be shipped, they can't just put that on the developers. They have to invest in internal infrastructure and automation and tooling to assure that that happens, even if they switch out developers this problem will be stay as a a, a a solved problem so by investing in ci pipelines and automated checks that really make sure that we uh, adhere to our internal policies they can actually ensure this and no other company can do that because they basically are either too cheap or too lazy or unwilling to change their work processes so, because it's always practically going to be cheaper to not have all of this stuff and simply let the developers do all the work and just pray and hope that they will always be bringing their a-game so what i want you to take away from this is that i believe that the fan companies the re one of them like they have two main reasons why they ship high quality co code the first and primary reason is that they invest heavily 
in good internal tooling and good internal processes. They are the, I mean, the most of the other companies of the world, they take their inspiration from these companies because of the, the fact that they are bleeding edge in this, I would say. And I think that that is a very good lesson that everybody should learn from. You need in order to, I mean, and, and, and the thing is, don't just stop at using Kubernetes. Don't just stop at using this, like whatever tool that the fan companies are using. Understand that you have your own internal processes. Understand that you, I mean, you're software developers. You're not just building a web application. You can, or whatever you're building, you can use those those skills to at, at a meta level. I mean, shit. I have been on projects where we literally designed our own UI framework just because we knew that we could actually now all practically automate the. Uh, the development of code and in another scenario we were working on like a lot of boilerplate that took a lot of time so instead of just sitting there like a monkey and just typing everything out because that's the default we created a small tool that actually generated the file for us you can do these sorts of things too and I think companies need to do that in order to reach the sort of quality levels that the fan companies have and the second thing is education you need to educate your developers. They need to care and they need to have their finger on the pulse of the company. Education and workshops and uh, initiatives that make developers go the extra mile together with very, very good uh, and deve well-developed internal tools. is This is the thing that the fan companies do better than anybody else. Have a great day.